Errol Spence, Sean Showtime Porter, and where do Bud and Thurman fit in? We get to that next. Please like and subscribe. Help us get to 10,000 subscribers. Uh, leave a comment below. Let us know what you think. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, welcome to another episode of Tuesday Night Fights. Uh, the welterweight division is on fire. Uh, Sean Porter said that he and Errol Spence uh, would be the easiest fight to make happen in boxing. Uh, Spence is down, so it looks like if that fight wants to happen, it will. Um, Kenny Porter says he, he's down to make the fight for, for uh, Porter's next fight. Um, Bob Arum also just said today that he will look to make Bud and Spence as soon as possible. Um, he said, and, and Bob Arum said today that Crawford has a tough fight coming up, and if he wins that, he will look to make a pay-per-view fight with Spence uh, as soon as possible next year. So, <clears throat> big things on the horizon for the 147-pound division. Um, it, it, I don't want to say it's been slow, but all the top names, you know, really haven't been fighting each other. Um, you, you got the big five names. Um, we'll get into all that. Uh, but let's start this banter. Let's start off with this banter between Spence uh, and Crawford that, that started with Errol Spence. Um, questioning the resume uh, of Terrence Bud Crawford. Um, I, I think these are the two best fighters at 147 and, and the two best fighters in America. Um, these are the two, uh, along with other guys like Tank Davis, but th these are two in particular are the future of American boxing. Um, Spence said that Crawford is, is a lot of smoke and mirrors and, and, and asked who he had beaten who was better than Chris Algieri. Okay, well, let's look at Algieri. Um, he got embarrassed and knocked down six times, completely dominated and outclassed by Manny Pacquiao. Now, Jeff Horn beat Manny Pacquiao. So, Horn beat Pacquiao, and Pacquiao dominated and humiliated uh, Chris Algieri. Stands to reason, Horn's better than Algieri. Um, and, and if you can't see why I would say that, I, I don't know what to tell you, right? Uh, they have a common opponent. One guy got embarrassed, and the other guy beat him. So, um, there's... Look... I'm an Errol Spence fan. He's a Dallas, Texas guy, a fun fighter, who doesn't seem to back down from anyone, and he's a heck of a human being. Right? There's nothing not to like about Errol Spence, and that's why he's caught on um, and has the following now and is becoming a fan favorite. That being, says, that being said, he has wins over Chris Algieri, Lamont Peterson, and then the, the, the crowning achievement, the win over Kell Brook. So he's got a win over Kell Brook, great win. Perhaps a better win than anything on... Um, Bud's resume, honestly. And then he's got two other wins, Algeria and Lamont, against much lesser fighters. He's captured just one title. Crawford has won six or seven world titles. I know he didn't win the WBA against Gamboa, but, I mean, officially he's won six, but he also won what I, I don't know why it wasn't a unification fight, but... So Crawford's won six world titles over three weight classes and became undisputed at 140. Then stepped up and beat Horn at 47 in his first fight at welterweight. Um, Horn, who had just beaten M Manny Pacquiao. In all seriousness, and I'm saying this as a big Spence fan, Crawford's resume is drastically better. It's not even close. That's not to say that Spence has a trash resume. He doesn't. He has a fairly decent resume. It's just not as good as Bud's. You know, it, it started off with Spence asking, who's better than Algeria that he's beaten? Okay. Well, let's take a look at that. I, I have a list of names here. Ricky Burns, Beltran, Gamboa, Postal, Felix Diaz, who in reality beat Peterson. Let's, let's be real about that one. That, that was scored a draw. Felix Diaz won that fight and everybody knows it. Uh, Julius Ndongo and Jeff Horn. So that's seven guys on his resume that is better than, than Chris Algieri. You, you have two guys on your resume who are better than Chris Algieri. Peterson and Kelp Brook. Now, in reality, Kelp Brook may be better than everyone on that list that I just read off. So, between the two, um, Errol Spence may have the single best win. But if, if we want to commit it, well, then Jeff Horn had a better win than, than, than Spence, right, in being Pacquiao. So, you know, the one win doesn't make your resume, right? So, 
The Spence may have the best win, but then if you took the next the, the next seven best wins, they were all belong to Crawford. So Crawford clearly has the better resume. He's more accomplished. He's won more titles, and he's got better names. So I'm not exactly sure where Spence was going with that, and maybe he just didn't know what was going on. Um, but all those wins are better than Chris Algieri, who was a 140-pound guy fighting at 147. So let's break down all the action at 147. Okay, you got the big five names. Sean Showtime Porter, who just capped the WBC in beating Danny Garcia. I, I, I know there's some debate and some controversy about that. We scored at 116-112 for Porter. We thought the decision was right. We thought clearly the right guy got the decision. Um, I think if you gave all the close rounds to Danny Garcia, you could get it 6-6. Six, six. You could score for Garcia, and, 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 you know, but you'd have to try to want to score for Garcia. Porter did the more, more successful work, the cleaner work. Porter won that fight. Um, and that fight with Spence could be made early next year. Um, Spence is, kind of, is, is in a good seat now, but you also have Keith Thurman, and I want to get into Keith Thurman real quick. Uh, we don't know if Keith Thurman's ever going to fight again. Right, I mean, it's been a long time, a year and a half. If you saw him at the uh, Garcia uh, Porter fight, he looked like he weighed about 200 pounds. He had a gut on him. He did not look like he was anywhere near returning. Um, he says he's going to have an announcement in October, look, or in, in a month or so. Last October, he said he was going to fight three times this year. And then in, in, in this year, January, February of this year, he said he was going to fight three times this year. He went on... And we can post links to this. He, he went on and said that um, his, his elbow surgery, that he had the, the, the loose bodies removed, takes six to eight months to recover from. Well, he's been out a year and a half. And according to the Association, the, the American Association of Orthopedic Surgeons, it takes a couple of weeks. Pitchers have this time, it's a type of surgery all the time in baseball. Okay? And, and their elbow is also pretty important to them. This is not major surgery. This is a couple of weeks. It's microscopic surgery. The reason why you have microscopic surgery is because it's minor surgery, right? And this is not me. This is this is the Association of Orthopedic Surgeons speaking, right? I mean, if you believe that Keith Thurman had six to eight months, and he was saying it's more like eight to 12 months to recover from orthopedic surgery, You'll believe anything. I mean, you know, don't go to the car dealership. Don't go to the used car dealership by, by yourself. Don't don't buy any electronics by yourself because you're gonna you're gonna be had if you do that. If you believe Keith Thurman, then you'll believe absolutely anything. And then he had a, a random hand injury. He said he had a bruised hand. Okay, so he had a bruised hand and that which he suffered in March, April, May, June, July, or, that's kept him out six more months. Where he can't even run <laughs> or do any cardio and he gets fat, right? I, I don't know if anyone believes Keith Thurman at this point. So is Keith Thurman going to come back? We're going to put an asterisk next to that. If he does, though, he's got a mandatory shot at Porter. So he could, and, and we'll see what the WBC does, but the WBC has two mandatories lined up for Porter, Thurman and Ugas. So, I mean, where do we go with this, right? I mean, Thurman can... Go to the WBC and say, no, you gave me first crack when I came back at Sean Porter. I want that fight now. Now, I don't think Thurman's going to do that. Thurman only fights every once a year. So let, let's say he does come back at the end of the year, right? Let's say Keith Thurman's telling the truth, which I don't believe he is, and he makes an announcement in October that he's going to fight in December or January. Then he's going to be out at least 9, 10 months to a year or more until he wants to fight again. So, I mean, him fighting anyone realistically is just... Probably not going to happen. He fought once in 2016, once in 2017, and we don't know if he's going to fight at all in 2018. The guy just doesn't fight anymore. I, I, I don't... Okay, I mean, you guys believe him if you want. I, I don't believe him. Um, so, we're not going to get too involved with Thurman, but he could throw a hiccup in this Porter uh, Spence unification fight, potentially. And Porter Thurman would also be a unification. I cannot believe the WBA has not stripped Keith Thurman yet. I mean, what do you have to do besides be named Gamma Rigandau to have the WBA strip a belt from you? Seriously, Keith Thurman hasn't fought anybody in a year and a half. 
and, and they won't take his belt from him. But but Rigandau says, I'm going to jump up two weight classes to fight somebody. And then if you lose, we take your belt. It's like, uh, how, how is that consistent? The only one who loses his belt is Rigandau. I mean, Thurman, Thurman can't do anything wrong, to, with, according to the WBA. Um, and then, of course, uh, we have Errol Spence, who's kind of in the catbird seat right now. He can, you know, he's really in, in top position. He can, a fight with any of these guys are makeable, and it would be a, a, a huge payday. The other two names that aren't on the Al Heyman side, of course, Manny Pacquiao, who looks like he's going to be fighting Amir Khan, and he's going to be real, real careful, real cautious. We don't even know if he can fight in the U.S., and I'm not knocking Pacquiao. I, I think he could beat Thurman, maybe. I, I don't know. I don't know if he'd do well with the rest of these names. Porter, may, may, I, I don't know how these fights would look. But I'm not saying Pacquiao's completely done. I think he showed in his last fight that he's still a pretty high version of himself. He's not the best version. He's not the... Miguel Cotto, Antonio Margarito, Josh Cloddy, Ricky Hatton version of himself. But he's close. He's not totally removed from that. He's probably 85% of that, which is still really good, right? So there's still a lot. There's still something left in Pacquiao where he's still a, a world-class elite fighter. Um, and then obviously Terrence Crawford. Well, Terrence Crawford's fighting Benavides. If he beats Benavides, which he certainly will, and I can't even believe he's fighting Benavides... I, I don't know what he's going to do next if he doesn't get Errol Spence early next year. There's just not much out there for him. We know that Pacquiao is not going to fight him. If Khan beats Pacquiao, which he's not going to, maybe he, they can make a fight with Bud and Khan next year, but does that really do anything for you? I mean, really, Bud and Khan, who's going to win that, right? But I, I don't even think Khan gets past Pacquiao, so that does nothing for me. Could you get Kel Brook? Could Eddie work out? But they. Is that something you'd want to see? I mean, there's not much out there for Bud with top rank if, he, if they don't go to Al Heyman. Uh, and Crawford just signed and extended his contract with top rank. So he's with Bob. And again, I'm not knocking him for that. It's a little curious. Like, you know, Bob Arms gets sued by everyone. Floyd Mayweather said years later that he still hadn't gotten paid for. Uh, the Zab Judah fight and the Otoro Gaddy fight. Uh, Oscar De La Hoya sued him. Um, Manny Pacquiao is now suing him. So that's his three biggest names in, in recent history. And all three of them have sued him, right? So where there's smoke, there's fire, right? You know, twice is a coincidence, three times is a trend. He doesn't pay his fighters. But look, that's up, that's up to Crawford. That's none of my business. If Crawford thinks Bob Arum is the swellest person in the world and that's the only person he wants to work with, Hey, listen, but that's your decision. I'm, I'm not telling you how to control your career. I don't pay your bills. I don't raise your kids. I don't, whatever. This is a filthy business. You have to do what's in your best interest. So maybe that's signing with top rank. But after Benavides, what is there for him? There's, there's nothing out there, right? So where, where does he go? This is going to be a difficult, a difficult task because he... he because he's the best fighter in the world, and he also has to be the B-side, right? Because if he wants to fight one of Al's guys, Al's going to say, okay, I know that you're in a position where you're going to have to fight bums. I don't want to call them bums. Let's not use that word. You're going to have to fight lower-level fighters. You're not going to be able to fight any of the top 147-pounders. Because even if you want guys like Vargas or Broner, you have to come through me to get them. And at that, you probably have Ugas. You still have to come to me to get them, and you're not going to get any of them because I say no, right? <laughs> Unless you want to take... Short money. So Al Heyman, he just, he's not in a great negotiating spot unless Bob Arum knows something that I don't know and that we don't know. Now, Bob Arum just signed a deal to work with Frank Warren. So, I, I, again, I don't, I don't know what that does. There aren't a bunch of 147 guys at around 147 over in the UK at all or, or with uh, Warren. Like I said, the only name really from the UK at around 47 are, are Khan and Brook, and they're both with Eddie. So I, I don't know what that really does. I mean, maybe it, it might be good for ESPN, but it doesn't do anything for Crawford. So, you know, that deal was obviously close to being made when, when Bud signed his extension last week. So I, I don't know what Bob sold him. I don't know what Bob's offering him. But I, I you know, it... it if he wants to buy any of the top welterweights, he's going to have to be the B-side. Like, in, in reality, he's going to have to take short money. I, I don't know how that that helps him. 
So just like, and I know what you're saying. Why would Bud take short money? He doesn't have anything to negotiate with, right? Like if if, if they want to make a fight with Porter, right? Let's say Crawford wants to fight Porter. Well, I have options, right? If I'm Porter, I have options. I could fight you, or I could, or, or for the same money, I could fight Keith Thurman or Errol Spence. If I'm Errol Spence, I could fight Porter. I could fight there. I don't need to fight you. They could all fight each other on the Al Heyman on the Showtime side. I'm only gonna fight you if I'm gonna make more money, and and your, and your name and what Bob Arum has done for you, you're you're not a huge draw. <laughs> you know, you're just not. You're not any bigger than uh, than a draw than Errol Spence or Keith Thurman is. And I don't even know if you're any bigger of a draw than Sean Porter is right now because that was that was a great fight in front of a, a live audience, a big audience. So look, if, if a fight with Thurman and Bud or a fight with uh, Thurman, if a fight with Thurman and Bud is a 50-50 split, and a fight with Spence and uh, Crawford is a 50-50 split, in order for him to get that fight, he's going to have to take short money. Now, his ego is not going to let him do that. So, it's just, it's a it's a real tricky spot for Terrence Crawford to be in right now. I don't know what, again, I don't know, and he's not going to get the Pacquiao fight. Like, that's off. That would be a big money fight for him. It would be, look, it was not something I, I obviously I'd rather see him fight Porter, Thurman or Spence, but if he fought Pacquiao, it would be a big money fight for him. So, so go take it. Like I would never begrudge a guy for for taking a big money fight. Just like when Mayweather fought Hatton, I'd rather have seen him fight Paul Williams or some you know someone like that or, or Margarito at that time. But Hatton was the bigger payday. So fight Hatton. I mean, what am I gonna tell him? I, I don't pay your bills. You need to make as much money as you can. And I would say the same thing for Crawford, right? Like if, if I'm offered. $5 million to fight Pacquiao or $3 million to fight Errol Spence. Uh, you got to fight Pacquiao. You got to take the easier fight for $5 million, right? Uh, let us know what you think. Where does Crawford go from now? Where does the welterweight division stack up? What fights do you think you're going to see next? Those five guys, Crawford, Spence, Thurman, Porter, Pacquiao, who do they all fight next? Where do they all go? And, and how does this shape out over the next year or so, so with uh, Terrence Crawford in top rank? Um, do, do they cross-negotiate with Al Heyman and the Showtime guys? Or, or is Bob Arum, like Bob Arum always does, going to keep the money in the Bob Arum circle? Uh, let us know what you think. Uh, please like and subscribe. Help us get to uh, 10,000 subscribers for Tuesday Night Fights. This is 3D Boxing signing off. Thank you, and God bless. Enjoy 3D Boxing vlog videos? Show us some love by clicking the like button. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3dboxingvlog.com is also on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.